So in addition to the usual complement uh, of uh, maintenance work that the crew has been engaged in pretty heavily this week, uh, they're always uh, participating in uh, the multitude of science experiments taking place on board the station. Uh, one of these ongoing goals uh, of the overall science research taking place on board the ISS uh, is to help uh, assess uh, how crew members can better overcome the negative effects of weightlessness as they spend about six months uh, five to six months in this weightless environment can have a pretty big impact on their body, specifically uh, through the loss of bone and muscle mass. Uh, a little bit later this week, the crew is scheduled to start working uh, with a new experiment from the Japanese uh, Aerospace Exploration Agency called Hybrid Training, uh, which is looking to test a, a new exercise protocol that uh, could hopefully help crew members uh, on board the station as well as crews on future uh, exploration missions. Uh, as well as also having uh, some pretty big implications potentially down here on the ground. So to speak about this study, a little bit earlier this week, I was able to talk with Dr. Masaki Shirakawa, uh, the manager for Space Station Life Science Mission Integration at JAXA's Space Environment Utilization, Utilization Center in Tokyo. And I started off uh, just asking him to explain what's new about uh, this hybrid training protocol and what the crew members are going to be doing uh, to actively participate in it. So the uh, current muscle training device on board ISS, uh, such as AIRED, is very large. On the other hand, the hybrid training system is so compact that it can be used as a backup system for conventional uh, resistive training device in ISS. And in the current experiment plan, a crew member will conduct the training three times per week for four weeks. That is a uh, total 12 times uh, using the hybrid training system. And each training time is about uh, 20 minutes or so. And after the series of training is completed, uh, effect of the training or muscle function would be measured on board and on the ground after return. Okay, and you make mention, you know, the hybrid training system, it's very small, it's compact. What exactly is it and what is it doing to, you know, stimulate the muscles of these astronauts while they're in microgravity? Uh, yes, uh, when uh, electrical stimulation is applied to a muscle, the muscle contraction will occur, and this will generate a uh, force. On the ground, this force has a similar effect to that produced by weight. So against this force, if you intentionally bend or stretch out your arm, uh, this muscle will be strengthened. So in the other world, uh, the force produced by weight on the ground is uh, replaced by that uh, generated by electrical stimulation. So I know electrical stimulation is used sometimes here on the ground in medical treatments and various physical therapies. Is it going to be kind of similar to that same mechanism? Uh, yes. Uh, as, uh, as for electrical stimulation, we need to care the position of uh, uh, muscle to apply stimulus. Uh, if the position of the electrode is not good, uh, it will not be an effective training. Uh, for the crew member, the position of the electrode is determined at the baseline data collection session before the flight, and it indicated by the supporter on orbit. And also the intensity of the stimulus is uh, also important. So uh, crew, uh, for crew, uh, crew training, both intensity and position will be uh, selected for right value. Okay, and so this stuff taking place on the station this week and continuing on is kind of the trial runs uh, of this uh, hybrid training. How might, and you may mention that the, the device is very small, uh, how might hybrid training be beneficial to future astronaut crews on long missions going way beyond Earth orbit? 
Uh, yes, uh, the hybrid training system is so uh, compact that the crew member can use the uh, system even in a spaceship toward uh, exploration. Uh, in addition, uh, the investigators team has studied uh, doing hybrid training uh, as a resistive exercise while doing aerobic uh, aerobic exercise, uh, like a bicycle training. So we uh, expect that uh, crew can conduct effective exercise with short exercise time in total. Yeah, I'm sure it's a lot easier to carry that out into space than a big stationary bike. <laughs> um, so one, yep. one, one, one final question for you. What are some of the potential benefits that you guys are maybe hoping to learn that could be uh, applicable to people down here on the ground on planet Earth? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, the investigators team has already applied the hybrid training method to uh, patients who need rehabilitation or who can't move just, af just after surgery. And you know, the astronauts will suffer from uh, rapid muscle atrophy during space flight. So if effectiveness of the hybrid training for astronauts is showed uh, in this uh, experiment, we may be able to accelerate application of the hybrid training system uh, on the ground. And consequently, uh, I think we can demonstrate the uh, human research in space is beneficial for pe people in uh, on Earth. And we always get excited uh, when something taking place on space can help those just right back down here on the ground. Well, uh, again, thank you for your time, uh, Dr. Shuikawa. Uh, best of luck to you and the investigation team in this ongoing study. We'll be sure to follow along closely. Thanks again. Thank you.